In this video, we'll discuss the first sheet that you'll complete for major assignment two, the income and projection sheet. Like with other assignments, you'll start by entering your name at the top in the blue shaded cell. This generates values throughout the assignment that you'll use for your calculations. You'll see, for example, that your current income has populated here in cell B11. And because it's gray shaded, going by the legend, you can recheck that over here on the right. There's nothing to do. You'll fill in just the blue, green, and gold shaded items. The general idea on this sheet is to calculate an inflation rate for five years using a historical set of CPI values, and then you'll apply that rate to your income. For the CPI values, you're gonna look those up at different month and year combinations. In the table, and all of these items are explained in each of the instructions, also looking at the PowerPoint accompanying the assignment will be helpful. That'll have some additional explanation as well as symbolic formulas. We'll be looking up a series of CPI values that are a year apart. So to fill in this table, we'll first enter the month and year entries and then move to the CPI lookup. For the month and year, our, here our first month and year are March 2014. Yours will be different. It depends on your name. Going a year forward, we see that the next month and year will be March 2015. The third month and year will be March 2016, and so on. So we're going by steps of one year each time. Once you've completed the month and year entries, you'll now go to the CPI value lookups. For this, note that there's a link in box 2A. You can access that by left clicking on the CPI values item here. I've opened that in a different window, so I'll show you there how this lookup will work. Let's remember here our month and year are March 2014. Here's the website that's mentioned. In order to retrieve values, you'll left click on the very first item in the list, scroll down, and then click on the retrieve data button. This will give you a range by default from 2014 to 2024. This is the last 10 years. If you wanted to, you could adjust the dates here if you needed to get rates further back. And we see that we have year on the left with various months from January to December going off to the right. This is also each half year uh, aggregate CPI value on the in the last two columns, you will need to use those. So we started at March 2014. We read off the value here from the table, 236.293, and we enter that as our first CPI value. We then continue going back to the chart, and we just use the rest of the values going down this March column, 2015, 2016, and so on, until we get to our last year. Once we've filled in our CPI values, we're ready to move on to the next section, which is calculating the 
slope and intercept for the given CPI values and years. Here we want to see for each year what a predicted CPI value would be. Now this is similar to slope and intercept calculation that you had seen in the DQs. We'll use the Excel formulas, slope and intercept. And you can either type in your values. The Ys in this case are going to be the CPI values. The Xs will be the years. Or you can select them like this. For the intercept, you'll similarly use the intercept function in Excel. Here, it's OK for the intercept to be negative as well. Once we have the slope and intercept, we can now move on to calculate our projection. We want to project five years past our final CPI value. If we move to the left briefly again here, we see that our last year is 2022. Moving five years beyond that will give us 2027. So we're using the slope and intercept to project to year 2027. Here, we just use the linear formula y equals m times x plus b, where the slope m is our slope or a cell reference to it. The year is the one we just entered in K32, and the intercept b is in H20. With the projected CPI value, we can now calculate an inflation rate based on that value and our last CPI value. So we're going from 287.504 in year 2022 over to about 303 in year 2027. The formula for this is the difference, the projected CPI value minus the previous CPI value in the numerator, and then we divide by the CPI, previous CPI value in the denominator. Note that the value we ended up with here is about 5.5%, and in general, that's what you can expect somewhere in the mid single digits for your inflation rate. The next step is to bring over the current income from the cell that was filled in when we entered our name. In this case, we have to use a cell reference here. We don't want to retype the value. The easiest way to do this is just to type in equals and then navigate over to our income cell here, B11, left click, press enter on your keyboard, and that will fill that in for us. The five-year projection now is projecting the current income forward five years using this five-year inflation rate. So it'll be the current income times one plus that rate. And the monthly income will then be that yearly projection divided by 12. There's also one additional step that we haven't yet taken, and that's to add formatting. Formatting is discussed in each of the instruction sections. In section 2C, we'll want to format the CPI value as number with three decimals and the inflation rate as percentage with two decimals. Remember that here under the Home tab in the number section, we can select the appropriate item from the drop-down list 
Here the default is two decimals, so we can increase that to three by using the increase decimal button. For the inflation rate, we would similarly select percentage. That's already two decimals, so we're good there. And then the currency amounts in K35, 36, and 37 are already set appropriately, but you'll want to recheck those as well. Similarly, working our way backwards a little bit here, uh, we'll want to format the slope and intercept as number with three decimals of pre precision. Note that we can select multiple cells that we want to format at the same time. So again, we select number and then increase it by one decimal. And finally, over in our initial section where we filled in the CPI table, we'll want to format these CPI values as well as number with three decimals. Here, make sure that you actually add this formatting. Even though the formatting looks right initially, if it's general, that's not correct yet. The reason there is that if we happen to have a CPI value that has a trailing zero or two, then it wouldn't display in the same uniform format. And so we would want that formatting there in order to ensure that that happens. That concludes income and projection. Uh, next, we will talk about the student loans sheet.